All right, big dogs. We have uh, we have a new content creator on the scene. Speaking of the scene, I'm in the greatest place on the planet, San Diego. So if I zoom in and out and you see just a figurine of me, don't worry about it. Just listen to the words coming out of our mouths. That on the other side of the screen is government name Noah Hills, Twitter name Noah More Parties. Make sure you go follow. We're gonna do. We're gonna be doing hella giveaways over the next few months i don't know what they're going to be i don't know if they're going to be jerseys i don't know they might be nfts they might be fucking bananas but everything is going to run through this man's twitter so at noah more parties that will be linked in the description doppelganger slim shady no hills welcome to the big dog team um you are someone whose work i admired very much back in the day when you used to live on twitter and then you ran away from twitter and i don't know if you know the search that i went through to find you i actually tweeted <laughs> Like, does anyone know where Noah More Parties is? Ryan McDowell DM me and was like, I have his email. He gave me an email. I email, I sent an email through it. It kicked back and was like, uh, this is not a real email anymore. He gave me a second email, and that's when I eventually got through to you at your college email, and that's when we started conversing back and forth. So I'm glad you're back in the Twitter world, and I'm even more happy that you were part of the big dog world. Everyone give him a warm welcome. Down in the comment section, how are we doing over there? Pretty good. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I disappeared for a while. Glad to be back. Glad you glad you hit me up. So excited to to get going. Fuck yeah! All right. So Noah's Noah's uh, main concentration. He's he's big in the in the dynasty world. Specifically, he's got this focus on incoming rookie running backs, and it's it's one of the processes. Yours, you know, I love reading your work. You're doing a ton of really really good stuff over at the Breakout Finder. He writes a lot of blog posts for them, concentrating on the the incoming rookie running back class. So we will link a lot of that work down below. Again, though, if you just go follow him on Twitter, you'll see all that stuff kind of coming out daily. So we'll hit you with. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of like lesser known name running backs that you're probably not going to be aware of unless you're really in tune with what's going on in the rookie world. And, you know, it's led to a lot of uh, big hits. And like James Robinson is a guy that, you know, people wouldn't have had to pick off off the waiver wire after the rookie draft. They listen to you because they'd be drafting him in the fourth round of stuff. So we're trying to find some hidden gems for you. And Noah's going to take over uh, a weekly spot on the show. You've already seen Mike throw up a, a video. I'll be throwing up videos on Tuesday. The other Noah FB God is officially bike as well. So we've got like a little bit of a starting four here. We need to find a, a center for our rotation. We might take over multiple spots and be fucking universal with it. But I wanted to talk a little bit about your process before we get into who we both probably agree to be the most overrated running back in this year's class relative to where we've started to see him go in rookie drafts. So, no, you've got a, an interesting process to grind out these rookie running backs uh, a lot of it is you know relative to the team a player is playing on so you're looking at backfield mates you're looking at you know these other fucking names that you've kind of come up with we've got bay rating we've got chunk rating we've got you know all these all these things so why don't you give us like a you know like a human to human just like talk to us like we've never you know scouted rookie running backs for what are you really looking for to define what makes a good rookie running back a good rookie running back yeah so basically i like I can't, I, I don't really know how to watch film. Like I, I don't do like data analysis stuff, but basically I had this idea, like one thing I see in like the dynasty space or just like the prospecting space is guys like get just super excited about like random dudes every year and just like get tunnel vision on like, okay, this guy looks good. And my thought was always like, okay, he looks good, but does he look better than all these dudes in the past who like also looked good, but weren't actually good. And so my process is basically like collecting all these data points for these guys and finding the percentile ranks of where these guys land like in the past 15 years so a guy you know might look good on film but you know he's you know not actually efficient relative to everybody else that's come out so like why should i care that he looks good on film um and yeah a, lo a lot of that process is like looking at their rushing efficiency relative to their teammates um you know based on the idea that you know, a good running back is going to do more with what he's given than a bad running back. And so if you're operating in the same environment, you should be more efficient than the, than the guys who aren't going to the NFL. So, yeah, I, I think that's like a really good way to look uh, to look at it, because it's like how if you're going to be in the exact same situation as somebody else, because people try to do they're doing the most. You're, like they look at the film, they look at the highlight tapes and the guy that we're going to talk about in a little bit. It's tough to go on record and be like, I don't like this dude, because the average guy who's watching, you know, rookie running back stuff is going to go to YouTube and type in like, X, X player highlights and you're going to see his highlights and you're going to fall in love with this dude but you're going to fall in love with every rookie player if you just watch their highlights so when you break it down relative to like what they're doing in an offense 
it, it starts to make a lot more sense. And it's, it's weird that like more people don't do it that way. Okay. So why don't we break down some of like the key terminology that you use within your blog posts to kind of, and I think in the beginning of all your posts, you have like a little bit of a synopsis of how you do your process, right? Like the intro to every blog post is kind of like recapping what chunk rate means and like yards per carry plus and, and those kind of things. So like, I, is it like three or four key metrics that you're usually looking at? Yeah, there's kind of, yeah, I guess there's four of them. So the main one would just be like yards per carry plus, which is just a guy's, um, I've been looking at a guy's entire career, but you could do it in a game, in a season or whatever. Um, and it's basically his average yards per carry over his career versus every other running back on his team's like collective yards per carry during the time that the guy played. And, you know, positive is obviously better. Negative means he was less efficient. And then chunk rate um, plus, which is 10 yard run rate um, compared to his teammates. So kind of the same idea as yards per carry, but just looking at like how often is this guy reaching the secondary? Um, another one I use, which isn't compared to teammates, is just like is what I call breakaway conversion rate, which is on those runs where a guy reaches the secondary, like 10 plus yards, how often is he turning those into 20 yard gains? So kind of just isolating his impact to like what he's doing at the second level. And then the most recent one is Bay rating, which is box adjusted efficiency rating. Um, and that's based on the idea that like yards per carry misses a lot of like situational context, which is, is true. And so it looks at um, a guy's yards per carry against each different box count. So like against five man boxes, six man boxes, seven man boxes, et cetera. Um, and looks at his, his yards per carry in each of those situations relative to his teammates yards per carry in those situations. And then, using a weighted average finds like basically what the average carry for him was worth the average carry for every other running back on the team. Yeah. So it's a, it, it like simplifies basically what we talked about before. Like why try to compare a dude from the sec to a dude from the Mac conference? Cause you're not going to get a single fucking similarity out of two running backs. When you look at a guy in the same backfield, it's like you start to paint a clearer picture. And then when you start to take into account, like, of course, someone's yards per carry might be higher or lower relative when someone's seeing six man, eight man boxes. And I think that's kind of like, you know, we started working with sports info solutions a couple of years back. And once you got that data in your hands, you started mixing it up and cooking with it. And it, it's, it's a really cool, like concept that you kind of put behind the numbers because if you think about it like that makes them right like every every running back realistically is going to be within like one yard per carry of the other running back like everyone's probably between like 3.8 and 4.8 if you're below that probably not nfl caliber running back if you're above that we just know you're probably a very good running back so it's like what's the key dictator to tell what a yards per carry number is going to be more often than it's like it's like say uh you know a running back has a 70 percent chance to run the ball five yards Right. If it's a, if it's against a six man box, you add a seventh man in the box, that percentage dips dramatically. You add an eighth man in the box, that percentage, you know, it goes on in, in, in that sort of direction. So if you can compare relative, you know, what this guy does to his teammate while both seeing six man boxes, while both seeing seven man boxes, you're also getting the same offensive line blocking for you. You're getting the same quarterback handing the ball to you. So it starts to, uh, to again, paint a much clearer picture where I think like you're going in a direction where a lot of the industry is going to start following the trend that you're kind of. Uh, putting into motion now to make everything more relative to their teammates and on that note why don't we get into the player who we are i want to say kind of going out on a limb here uh relative to the industry because you know we've seen him up at 101 i, I think there will be you know a good like 25 percent, 20 percent of rookie drafts this year where this guy even Superflex, goes at the 101 i don't know if you want to take it away and, and, and drop the name to get a bunch of people fucking angry right now but i'm all for it let's run it yeah, uh, Isaiah Spiller, man. He's, I don't want to say he's not good. I'm really scared he's not good, though. So, I, like, again, someone you, you watch the highlights on Isaiah Spiller, and you're like, dude, this guy, you know, he, he looks the part. But when you break down the numbers, when you start watching every carry he has, when you start getting a little bit more in depth, I feel the same. I'm a little bit concerned of, uh, of what he becomes as a pure runner. I don't know if he's that good. And you've been on record, like, you've been an anti Miles Sanders guy for a long time. I, got, I think Isaiah Spiller is probably better. He's bigger, and he I think he offers a little bit more with his game. But I got a lot of the same vibes, where it's like not a good inside runner. He has a lot of good traits that do translate to the NFL. But Isaiah Spiller gives me that, where he's like almost more athlete than he is NFL running back, and he's doing too much behind the line of scrimmage, and it leads to like kind of doing some shitty things. Um, so why don't you break down a little bit more like why you're so against Isaiah Spiller? Yeah, yeah. I guess basically it comes down to like, he's just not efficient relative to his teammates. Like there's a lot of things to like about Isaiah Spiller. Like you said, he's big. He's probably going to be like 16, 20 at the combine. Like he was productive. Um, he's um, he's going to be like the, the youngest guy to be drafted in the first two rounds since like Derek McFadden. 
Um, he catches passes. Um, and he looks good on film. Like a lot, of, a lot of people that I respect like the way he looks on film. But he's just not efficient relative to his teammates. He, over his career, he averaged like 0.7 yards per carry less than other running backs on his team. His 10-yard run rate was 3% less. Those are like second and third worst in the class, like 10th percentile numbers. Like it's just really bad. So, yeah, I mean, that's my that's my concern about like going uh, going against a guy like Isaiah Spiller, where like he could be he could end up, you know, we could end up being right with this and being like he's not a good runner and still be really good at fantasy because he's going to be six foot, 220 pounds, which means NFL teams are going to see him as a workhorse and might just keep force feeding him the ball. He might get that goal line work and he is a great pass catcher. So it's like, that's where my nerves come in, where I'm like, okay, how far do I want to go out on a limb here being like, nope, I don't like Isaiah Spiller at the 101, the 102. We start getting down to the 105, the 107. It's like, okay, you got to pull the trigger at some point because it's all a range of outcomes with these rookies because you don't know where the situation is going to land them. You don't know. He ends up on like the Bills. It's like they're starting running back. That's 15 goal line opportunities a year that any shitty running back can turn into like 12 touchdowns, you know? So it's like, when you're fading a guy like Isaiah Spiller, you know, the very obvious choice is like, oh, we're seeing him at 101, 102. We don't like him relative to like Brees Hall or whoever, these other quarterbacks for your super flex team. But like how far out on the limb are you going with a guy like Isaiah Spiller? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, based on the the rushing efficiency numbers, he looks like, like a bottom five, bottom three guy in the class. I'm not going to put him at RB20. You know, that's yeah, silly. Yeah. He's going he's gonna to get picked in like the second round, like maybe the third, maybe the first, probably the second round. Um, and just based on like hit rates for those guys and like he's got good size, he can play on all three downs. Like he's he's got a good chance. Um, so he's probably still in my top five just because this is a pretty weak running back class. But like yeah. top half of the first round in rookie drafts, I, I don't think I'm touching him. Yeah, it's hard to pull the trigger there. I, there's always there's something that just like doesn't really rub me uh, in the right way when it comes to Isaiah Spiller. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I think like this could wrap it up because we we're gonna keep it simple. Just kind of introduce Noah to the audience out here. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be ho- hopping on the next one with him, but eventually he'll kind of take over the reins and be doing a weekly show by himself, or he'll kind of uh, he'll have creative control over the content that he puts out. So he will be a mainstay of what we have going forward and as you can see this is his first time on video I, th- I think i hear the uh the ac bumping in the background yeah 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 it's all good we're about to wrap up anyways um so he's got a, a much more in-depth breakdown of isaiah spiller right you have a, you have a live blog post about him on breakout finder yeah yeah there's actually two articles kind of about isaiah spiller on breakout finder oh mr mr noah went in on mr isaiah spiller all right all right yeah so we'll link both of those down below uh if you think we're just you know yelling nonsense not true he's got he's got some numbers he's got a good breakdown about isaiah spiller um, and to be cautious about it, man. So we will be rolling out some more kind of like premium content. We'll be having our rankings posted semi soon, uh, with rookie running backs and all that stuff. So you can see where we actually slot in when, when it comes to like drafting players, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, again, just want to do welcome Noah to the big dogs crew. I wanted to tell y'all to go follow him on Twitter. Cause that's where he's dropping a lot of his best work. And again, his articles on breakout finder. Mwah. If you are uh, in a bunch of dynasty leagues, man, subscribe to the channel. Cause we're going to be ripping off five plus dynasty rookie videos a week going forward um no anything else to add you got any plugs you got any fucking you want to drop a freestyle real quick i think i'm good on the freestyle i don't have anything to plug this is what i'm doing i'm doing this i'm doing breakout finder so you can find me there he keeps it simple he keeps it tight he keeps it efficient that's all we got for y'all today i'm gonna go hit the beach i'm gonna go chug down about 14 canned margaritas i'm gonna enjoy the rest of my vacation out here but the videos will continue pumping noah thank you uh for hopping on with me and we'll see you next week goodbye all right peace